For the benefit of doubt, it is a joint effort of the Nigerian Army, Nigerian Navy, Nigerian Air Force, and other security agencies of our country. I am to state that these operations have considerably degraded the common enemies of Nigeria and reduced economic sabotage in our exclusive economic zone. The update will cover our operational activities from 18th of March up to 5th of May 2020. Now let's look at Operation Lafia Dole in summary. Within the period under review, troops of Operation Lafia Dole put in a high professional effort with glaring success. Some villages that we are under attack during the period were rescued by our gallant troops and normalcy returned to the affected areas. A number of intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions were conducted, which revealed criminal hideouts and their activities. Consequently, a number of air interdictions were conducted, which led to the destruction of several Boko Haram terrorist logistics facilities and compounds, housing some of their leaders, including Abu Usama, and a number of their fighters who were eliminated. Similarly, a total of 343 BHT and ice swipe fighters were killed and several others suffered various degrees of gunshot wounds with narrow chances of survival. This is in addition to several others, including their key leaders killed by air bombardments. Furthermore, most of the Boko Haram logistics installations and networks have been destroyed while 16 of their informants and logistics suppliers were arrested. However, at the call of this duty, some of our troops paid the supreme price and others were wounded in action. Now a look at Operation Hadarindaji. Following closely, troops of Operation Hadarindaji conducted various clearance operations during the period under review. The combined effort of the land and air components, as well as other security operatives of the operation provided security for lives and properties. Several bandits, location and hiders were cleared with close air support provided for ground troops. In all, a total of 17 kidnapped victims were rescued and united with their families and 146 bandits were neutralized in Katsina and Zamfara states. Within the same period, troops of Operation Hadar in Daji recovered several arms and ammunition, among other equipment. Our agile troops also rescued 922 rusted cows and 446 sheep. However, four soldiers paid the supreme price. Operation Wild Stroke in Benue and Taraba states. Within the period, troops rescued seven kidnapped victims and recovered large catch of arms and other items. A total of seven bandits were killed by troops from contacts made at Toto, Nasarawa State, and Anku Mbagen in Atera Jangi Toro Council Ward of Ukum Luga government area of Benue State. For this operation, none of our troops was wounded or killed in action. A look at our maritime operations. Along the southern regions, troops of the armed forces of Nigeria operating within the maritime environment, covering operations Awase and Delta Safe, recorded tremendous successes in their operations. Cumulatively, a total of 61 illegal refining sites were discovered during anti-crude oil and anti-illegal bunkering operations in the Niger Delta region. In all, 4,464.8 and 1,781,781,000 liters of crude oil were recovered. Also, we are 
1,766,900 liters of HGO and 116,000 liters of DPK, that is kerosene, and 11,750 liters of PMS petrol were also recovered. During the swamp boogie operations, several refining ovens, receivers, surface metal storage tanks, coolers, dugout pits were deactivated and immobilized. Fishing trawlers were also arrested and handed over to Nimasa. In all, 15 hostages were rescued, a badge and some weapons were recovered, and three pipeline binders were also arrested. Also within the period, the Nigerian Navy rescued three Beninoas, whose fishing trawler caught fire at Lagos Anchorage. In addition, the Navy also responded to a distress call by the Beninoa Navy for assistance when 11 crew members on board a Portuguese container ship came under attack by pirates. Among those rescued were Ukrainians, Bulgarians, and Filipinos. The Nigerian Navy for this effort received commendation from the Benin Chief of the Naval Staff, Captain Bado. Additionally, 894 bags of small good foreign rice were impounded by the Navy at Agbami platform in Akwai Bomb State. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, we are the cross of the matter. In summary, the armed forces of Nigeria from 18th of March 20 neutralized 343 Boko Haram BHT oblique half swipe criminals in the Northeast, deleted 153 bandits in the northwest and north central parts of the country, among other successes. Furthermore, human and technical intelligence confirmed that between January and March 2020, 18 BHT and ISWAP leaders were killed due to our ground and air offenses against their settlements and hideouts. Adding to the most recent one killed between 18th of March to 12th of May, confirmed 19 BHT and ASWAP leaders have been neutralized by our gallant troops. Ladies and gentlemen, from our operations within the period under review, it is obvious that the armed forces of Nigeria is winning the war against the enemies of our great country. Consequently, the armed forces of Nigeria will remain resolute and highly committed to, enter the, to end the insurgency in the country above all, and amongst other criminalities and security challenges in the country. It will sustain the offensive and will not relent until peace is restored to every troubled region of our beloved country. The general public is hereby assured of the commitment of the armed forces of Nigeria to also protect the economic assets of Nigeria. Thus, the high command of the Nigerian military wishes to thank the general public for their support and still further solicit their cooperation towards providing credible and timely information that we facilitate proactive engagement in our operations. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you this morning for listening to the brief on what I will call a summary of our operations slightly above a month for about six weeks. At this point, if there are any gray areas, the front is the northeast, and his rear echelon is army headquarters here. His subsidiary echelons can be in Lagos or anywhere. So I will look at that question as being a very narrow question and uh, something not at this level of operations. It is uncalled for because he has a theater commander there. He has uh, sector commanders, everybody, and he goes here to see them. And like I told us that this is not the first time that it is happening and it will not be the last time. Rather, it's going to be sustained. So for the question you're asking, if I, let me understand it better that. Is it that he will stay in his bedroom, like me, I come from Wadimpa to come to work every day, he will remain there like that, 
The answer is no. At its level, it is not done that way. At that level, it is not done. He directs the operation, yes, mostly from the northeast, but once in a while he can leave that place. And that once in a while depends on the call of duty. If now they say come for Army Council, Army Council is not a one hour affair. If they say come for Security Council with Office of the National Security Advisor or the Presidency, it's not a one day affair. So that is it. And if he needs to come to the Army Headquarters or to Defense Headquarters, which they do regularly with the Chief of Defense Staff. So it is not good for me to shoot myself in the leg by answering that question directly at the base. No, it is not like that. It is as I told you before, it still remains that as a service chief, he can even coordinate everywhere, but his focus is now on what? On the notice as it has been, not a new team. I may not have answered to your satisfaction, but this is what I can provide for you. You can stay on and on, but I think it's good. I release you to quickly go and uh, to come. And these kind of questions truncated it and they refused to come out. As like I told you, Nigeria is a law abiding country. Now, Amnesty is not even at the level of DHQ to determine. It's at the level of a grand strategic level. What I can tell you is that, like I said, there are laws of armed conflict. If you surrender, you will be taken in and you will be treated like your own troops. That is where our job stops. So anything about amnesty, anything beyond that, and then if you surrender, we now profile them. I will repeat it over and over. After the profiling, there are those ones we call the high-risk group. The high-risk group are those ones that will say, look, I will continue to fight I will, until I die. Those ones will have a different facility for them somewhere, of which I don't think I should be repeating it. I've said it before. It's not, for, it's not healthy for our security. When they go there, government set up a court at the time that tried them, and the process was followed. I want you to find out Find that one out outside this forum, or maybe one on one where you will not record it, and then let it not fly on the air. Then the ones that are low risk, I was captured, they came to our village, they pack us, they coerced me with wife, they coerced me with money, they cajoled me and all those ones, they can volunteer for Operation Safe Corridor. Quit together. Those ones will now be disarmed properly, they will now be retrained and reintegrated back into the society through the civilian channel. So that is the way it goes. You don't, we, they don't just come and say, look, a soldier will know and say, I grant you amnesty. It's not the prerogative of this, not the, in the powers of the soldier to do that. Not even in the powers of DHQ. It's above, above, and above. So, and I think it's something that has been in the public purview that did not even generate, it did not come out, it, did not, it, did not, it was not originated from the armed forces of Nigeria. So I hope I have attempted in a way to, to address what you wanted, balancing it up.